Okay. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So scientific notation is just a way to write either really, really small numbers. Um, hold on. Pause that for a minute. I got to get my dog. He's getting into something. getting into stuff. Sorry about that. Okay, so a way to write scientific and um, the reason why we do scientific notation is to write really, really big numbers or really, really small numbers in a way where we can see them best. Um, because like if we were talking about 22 with million zeros behind it, we wouldn't want to write that every time. We wouldn't want to write 22 with a million zeros behind it every single time. Um, you would be there for a long time. So there's a way that you can write really big numbers or really small numbers. So for example, this isn't a really big number, I know, 2,000, but I'm just using it um, as an example. Okay, so 2,000, I, if I wanted to write this in scientific notation, first of all, the first step is to decide where your decimal is. When you don't see a decimal, the decimal is always at the end of the number, okay? We just don't write numbers like that because it looks silly. Like if we were at one decimal, two decimal, three decimal, that looks really silly that we would have to write a decimal. So if it's at the end of the number, we usually don't ever write it, okay? It's just assumed that it's there. Um, so with 2000, the decimal is at the end of the number. The second thing you wanna do is you wanna think to yourself, where can I put this decimal? Where can I move it? Where, what two numbers can I put it in between to make 2,000 a number between 1 and 10? If I put it here, right here, let me change my colors. So if I put it here after that zero, I've just made 20.00. So 20 is not this number right here, um, the number before the decimal, is not between 1 and 10. So where can I put that? for it to be between one and 10. Well, I could put my new decimal right here and then I have 2.000. And 2.000 is between one and 10 because two is between one and 10. So then my third thing I have to decide is how many times I move the decimal. So what I do is I do one, two, three. So there's three humps here. So I move the decimal three times. So um, then I have to decide well, is this number that I started with greater than one or less than one? Well, it's greater than one. So the number of times I move my decimal is gonna be my exponent, okay? If it's greater than one, it's going to be a positive exponent, okay? If the original number is greater than one, it's gonna be a positive exponent. So we have a positive three that's gonna be our exponent. So we rewrite the number, so our number now is two, any numbers, any zeros after the decimal, I can just drop. If there's numbers after the decimal, then you can't drop them unless they are zeros. Um, but if there was like a one here, then I wouldn't be able to drop those zeros because there's a number after it. But two times 10 and then to the third power because our exponent is positive because 2000 is greater than one and our exponent is three because we moved the decimal three times. Okay, let's try another one. Um, four, eight, nine, zero, zero. So 48,900. First of all, where is the decimal? The decimal, we don't see it, so we know it's at the end of the number. Now we need to decide where to put that decimal to make this number between one and 10. So obviously we're gonna put it here between the four and eight, cause that makes 4.8 and 4.8, actually 4.89, 4.89 is in between one and 10. See how many times we move the decimal? One, two, three, four. So we move it four. And is it a positive exponent or a negative exponent? Well, it's gonna be a positive exponent because 48,900 was greater than one. Our original number was greater than one. 
So now we just rewrite our number that we created between 1 and 10, which was 4.89. Remember, I can drop these zeros, but I can't drop the 8 and 9. 4.89 and then times 10 to the fourth power. Cool. Let's do another one. Um, point zero 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 six. So here, we already know where the decimal is. It's in the problem. It's right there. Where can I put this to make this number between 1 and 10? Well, if I put it here, that's 0.6. Um, that's not between 1 and 10 because 0.6 is less than 1. So I have to put it here to make this 6 because these zeros wouldn't matter if I put the decimal here. It'd be 0, 0, 0, 6, but we don't need zeros to hold the place value. Okay, So we only need it after the decimal. So six, and then we say how many times did I move the decimal? One, two, three, four. And it's going to be a negative exponent because we started with a number less than one. We started with a number less than one, so it's gonna be a negative exponent. So we rewrite that. Six times 10 to the negative fourth. Let's do one more. Point zero 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 nine. So first of all, we have to identify our decimal. It's right here. Um, and then we have to decide where to put it. Well, we know we need to put it right here to make that nine because nine is in between one and 10. And then we see how many times we move it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we know it's a negative seven because the number that we had originally was less than one. So 9 times 10 to the negative 7th. So this is what we call changing standard notation to scientific notation. This is called standard form, standard notation, okay? So now, what if we already had scientific form and we wanted to change it to standard form? So what if I already had 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 8th and your teacher said, change this to standard form? So the exponent tells us everything we need to know. It tells us which direction to move and how many times. If it's positive, we move to the right. If it's negative, we move to the left. And it tells us how many times we move it. So here we're moving 8 to the right because it's 8 positive. So we take 3.3 .3 and we move this 8 times to the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We fill in all these empty comps with zeros and then obviously we can put our commas in after we did it in 330 million um, and then we could do it like that here's a hint too we know we're going to move it one time to get past that three well okay so eight minus one is seven so we can just say oh we know we're going to add seven zeros one two three four five six seven add our commas, and then you don't have to do the little hump things. But if the hump things help you, that's completely fine. Another one, 1 1.5 times 10 to the negative 6. Remember, this exponent tells us exactly what we need to do. It tells us we need to move 6 to the left because it's negative. So again, you can rewrite the number, and you can do the little humps. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's where our decimal goes. Anything that doesn't have a number, you put zeros in. Or you could do the little trick. Well, we moved it once. We know we need to move it. Don't worry about the negative. We know we need to move it because it's six times to the left. The negative just tells us left. We moved it once. If we need to move it six times, we need to move it five more times. So which means it has five zeros. One, two, three, four, five, and then one five at the end. Let's do one more and then we'll call it a day. Well, for math, I'll stay and hang out with you guys for a bit. 4.567 times 10 to the seventh. The seven tells us which way we need to move. Seven to the right. Let's try to do it without doing the little hump. So if I know I have to move one, two, three to get past those numbers, then I know I'm gonna add four more zeros, 
because 7 minus 3 is 4. So all I have to do is 4, 5, 6, 7, and then add four zeros, and then add my commas. 45,670,000, okay? But if you needed to do the humps, that's completely fine. 4.567, and you needed to do the humps to do 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then fill in the zeros. That's completely fine as well, okay? So that is scientific notation. That's just an introduction to scientific notation. You are going to have to add and subtract scientific notation, and you're also going to have to multiply and divide scientific notation. And we'll get into that one next slide for sure. Um, I'm trying to keep it like sequential so it can help you guys. Okay, awesome.